If there's one thing above all else that you want to do to prepare yourself for Alpha 2, go out and join a guild. Ashes of Creation is trying to bring back that long forgotten social piece of MMORPGs, wanting you to team up, make friends, alliances, and relationships with all of these people you are playing with, even the ones you don't know, to push yourself to be the best. And if you think you can jump into Ashes of Creation solo and become one of the most skilled, best geared players on your server, well then you might want to rethink if this is the game for you. Everything about Ashes of Creation is guild oriented in a way. Yes, you could jump in solo, make your way along the progression path, eventually hitting end game and slowly gearing up your character, but it won't be easy and it'll probably cost you a lot of gold. There is no dungeon or raid finder, so pugging will be a bit more challenging if you don't have friends or guildmates at the ready, and you'll need access to a variety of processing and crafting stations to create the best in slot gear, not even to mention the resources you need to get. But with processing locked behind behind freeholds, you'll likely have to go out of your way to obtain these if you don't have friends or guildmates with access. All of this really makes guilds essential to being the best character you can possibly be jumping into the world of era. But a quicker path to progression isn't all that a guild has to offer in Ashes of Creation. Well, we don't really know the full extent of these features, and it seems the majority of guild features will be added during Phase 3, we do know that guilds will exist in some form at the start of Alpha 2. Starting out in the beginning of Alpha 2, guilds will be capped around 50% players. This could increase to a 100 player cap down the road, but it doesn't seem to be something at the start that's really their priority in development. Come launch, guilds will be capped at around 30 players, and that guild can progress to have a cap of around 300. But there will be a trade-off. Smaller guilds will have more available guild skills to unlock, as you can use a talent point-like system to continue to develop your guild. But you can also use those same points to spec into increased guild capacity. So it's kind of a pretty big trade-off. This will hopefully allow smaller guilds stay relevant by having more of these skills compared to the big massive guilds that are going to be all about player numbers. Keep in mind though that this is alpha and things will change, systems will be added, they will be tweaked, and you won't jump into alpha 2 with every single guild feature available right off the bat. These guild skills that you can spec into, as far as we know, are all passive. They do things such as increase regen and crit rate, have negating effects against certain attacks, or possibly have reperks in regards to economy, or increasing the guild's reputation within your home node, which will affect NPCs, quests, and merchant services. But guilds will need to make these choices carefully because as of now, they will not be able to respect their skill points, and although alpha is alpha, this could change in the future. Guild progression will work similar to leveling a player. You start around level 0 or level 1, and as the guild members complete quests, world events, or craft certain items, it will gain XP to eventually level up and unlock these skill points I just mentioned. When a guild reaches a certain level, its guild master will be be granted a certificate to enable placement of a guild hall. These can be placed within baronies inside the zone of influence of a node, which are basically these areas of land that have established plots in them and the majority of these plots will be taken up by freehold, but within each barony will have a singular guild hall in the center of those freeholds to be claimed. Not a lot is known on the specifics guild halls will provide yet, but we do know that they will serve as a focal point for guilds, offering a bunch of different benefits and customization options, such as allowing guilds to participate in the shareholder system. This is something that kind of ties into the economy and works with the stock exchange that is going to be in Ashes of Creation, helping to bolster the economy. The details on this we don't really know, whether you're buying shares of the guild or it just allows you access to various other guild-oriented shares within the stock exchange or something completely different. We really don't know what that is yet. But maybe you're feeling a little claustrophobic and you don't want to be crammed into a tiny guild hall with 300 of your guildmates, surrounded by freeholds and those strange Tolnar folk. You seek something bigger. Well, within the massive world of Vera, there will be five opportunities in the world to get something bigger. Yes, there are five castles in the world of Vera that guilds can try to claim, each with its own defenses such as traps, blockades, and enemy NPCs that can be hired by the guild. If you have the numbers and the right gear, well this castle could be yours. All it will require is, you know, a small siege for you to bust through those gates, capture some points, and claim this castle for your guild. And if the castle's unoccupied, it will be filled with challenging NPCs that will try to keep you out of it. And while I will be going more depth into guild castles in a different video, as there is a good amount of information behind it, basically when the castle is taken, your guild master will be crowned king or queen, flying mounts will become available to officers within the guild, and guilds can levy taxes to improve 
improve the castle's defenses, trigger events that benefit the node citizens under the castle's rule, and unlock additional buildings for nodes and much more. Now I know what you're thinking. Alpha 2 is about to begin. You don't have a guild or you can't even play Alpha 2. How are you supposed to find a group of people to jump in with and be ready to claim your castle or do other guild stuff with? Well, I know just the man to help you out. Do you have a weird infatuation with spreadsheets? Do you sweat profusely while gaming? Do you like it when your guild leader does things like this? If these are all the qualities you look for in a guild, you have found your home. But in all seriousness, while we do like to joke around and have a good time, we are a serious, competitive guild. The best place to see a rundown of what we are all about is our recruiting post on the Ashes forums. If you want more information, watch the first guild meeting, which goes into much more detail on our plans. A link to the first guild meeting is on the guild application, which you can find at discord.gg forward slash Genesis Guild. Oh, and look at this. It's a phoenix flying through the air revealing the Genesis logo. Isn't that nice? I think it's nice. Hopefully, if you don't have a guild, Rive has just convinced you to join Genesis, where you can reap the benefits of everything discussed above, plus a lot more, such as taking part in guild activities, gaining guild tabards, mounts, coats, barding for your mount, and sails for your ship to display the name Genesis with pride. We have a hardcore aim and already have well over 100 Alpha 2 members, so now is the time to join, and you will want to join a guild to make the most of Ashes of Creation's Alpha 2 and beyond.